Okay, in this video, we're going to look at a simple corollary of Euler's theorem and then uh, an example of an application of that corollary. So let's just recall that phi of n is the number of positive integers between 1 and n that are relatively prime to n. And then Euler's theorem says that if you have a number a that is relatively prime to n, a to the phi of n is congruent to 1 mod n. So now here's our uh, corollary. And that says that if the GCD of A and N is equal to 1, then A inverse is congruent to A to the phi of N minus 1 mod N. Um, okay, great. So let's see how this proof would go. So oh, maybe before we look at the proof, let's think about the um, implications of this proof or the advantages of uh, this proposition. Um, and that is finding inverses modulo n is sometimes quite hard, but um, you know raising things to powers mod n, there are a lot of tricks for simplification of that. So um, now moving on to the proof, um, we'll notice the following. Notice that a times a to the phi of n minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod n. Good. And now, um, so it immediately follows that a to the phi of n minus 1 is uh, congruent to a inverse mod n. Now, there's not really anything to this proof because um, inverses modulo n are unique because u of n is a group, the group of units, um, and so here we have what the inverse is. Okay, good. So I'll erase this board and then we'll look at a simple example of uh, this proposition. Okay, so now that we've seen this proposition, what we will do is uh, use it to solve this uh, linear congruence. So, uh, and the linear congruence is 4x is congruent to 7 mod 21. So, we need to calculate phi of 21, which is going to be equal to 21 times 1 minus 3rd times 1 minus 7th, where we're using the formula for phi of n, so that's equal to n, and then the product of reciprocals, 1 minus the prime powers. So, in this case, we get 12. So what that tells us, as an application from the corollary, so by the corollary we just proved, we know that 4 inverse is congruent to 4 to the 11 mod 21. Which means we need to calculate 4 to the 11 mod 21 in order to know 4 inverse. So let's do that by the method of repeated squares. So we'll look at 4 to the 1 is equal to 4 mod 21, 4 squared is equal to 16 mod 21, but 16 is a bit uh, bigger than you know we'd maybe like to work with, so let's write this as negative 5 mod 21, and now we can square this quite easily, so that means 4 to the 4th is the same thing as 4 squared squared, which is negative 5 squared, which will be 25 mod 21. But notice that 25 is back at 4. Great. And then finally, 4 to the 8 will be 4 to the 4th squared. So in other words, that is 16, which we, we might want to uh, write as negative 5 again. Great. So now we'll do that, and then we'll use the binary expansion of 11. So we'll use the fact that 11 equals 8 plus... 2 plus 1, which means we'll be using this power of 4, this power of 4, and this power of 4. So in other words, we can write 4 to the 11 equals 4 to the 8 times 4 squared times 4 to the 1. And we know each of these mod 21. So this is congruent to negative 5 times negative 5 times 4. So we have negative 5, negative 5, and 4. 
Great. So now we know negative 5 times negative 5 is uh, 25, which is 4. So this is uh, congruent to, so this is 25, which we said was 4, times 4, mod 21. But then 4 times 4 is 16, so that means this is equal to 16 mod 21. Great. Now, we know that uh, that tells us that 4 inverse is congruent to 16 mod 21, which means we can take our original linear congruence and multiply it by 4 inverse. So that means uh, multiplying by 4 inverse on the left-hand side will cancel the 4, and we'll get x is congruent to 16 times 7 mod 21. And then you can check that 16 times 7 mod 21 is in fact just 7 mod 21. Which seems like a trick, but this is something that could happen if uh, 7 divides 21 and it does. So that's why something like that happens. Okay, so that's the final answer.